We are on dual side and we have our turn play in the red colors to the right side of the map. Starting for Startail is... Startail Virus. He's down two games in this up and down group. He needs a win. He desperately needs it if he loses in another game, another map. And he will be on 0-3, which will basically completely annihilate him out of the competition for the Code Esports. His opponent, on the other hand, is starting for FXO. It is our Zerg player to the left, in the blue colors. FXO Lucky. Oh. Lucky taking a win against 4GG and losing against Haki is on 1-1 right now. I wanted to point out that even though this map is very difficult for Zerg, it's hard to take a third base safely. In statistically, it's statistically speaking, this map is actually Zerg favored. It's a 43.6% win rate for Terrans on this map. So this map is actually, even though it's difficult for Zerg, I think, uh, I mean, basically what I'm trying to say is the stats here show that it's good for Terran, but actually I think, it, I mean, uh, good for Zerg, but I think it's actually still tough for Zerg here. It depends on your style, really. It depends on what kind of style. If you feel comfortable taking a later third and making a macro hatch, as most Zergs these days are, then you should be okay here. But if you're that kind of Zerg that really wants a fast third base or really does not want to uh, make the macro hatch, wants to just get the economy going, it can be quite tough. It's very difficult to use Mutalis on this map effectively because there's nowhere for them to hide. Uh, you know, you can get trapped in the bottom right if you're not careful. It's better on this map than on other maps for Mutas, but it's still harder to use Mutas and even Roaches on this map because even though there's a lot of different attack areas, if the map gets controlled by Terran in any way, the Roaches have so far to run, and uh, that's why you see mech on this map sometimes. A very nice combination, in my opinion, on this map for a Zerg player is if he sticks to a Zergling, Baneling, and Mutalisks. You can use the Mutalisks to harass at first and try to secure your base, and uh, you just rely on the double upgraded Zerglings on the ground units. You don't have to transition into uh, the later stage of the, well, into uh, Broodlords as fast as on other maps yeah. because you can kind of delay your opponent's third for a bit, and especially if you stick to, uh, to the Zerglings. At first, you have to deal with the Hellion pressure, which is, of course, annoying. And if the Terran player, as you said, is playing uh, really well and controls the map. He can delay your third for a while. But with the Zergling style that we see nowadays, most Ter Zerg players are able to pressure the Terran. And if you win the first engagement, if you win the first engagement with a Marine and Tank from a Terran player, you are just in a beautiful position because suddenly you control the map with your Tier 2 units and you can pressure with Mutalis. And the Terran player always has to react and this is really difficult on a dual side if uh, the Zerg just get this momentum going. Yeah, I agree. Uh, something else to note about Mutalis play on this map is that there's so many different areas of trees where you can kind of hide your Mutas and pick off tanks without really having fear of Marines because if the Marines stem try to chase Mutas, you just run over those trees and then the Marines can't hit them. Um, so, just something else to note about Mutalis play on this map. It's really good for taking out tanks. Not the best for harassment, but it can work really well if you get ahead, like you said, uh, early on in the game. A second factory is going up for Virus, so we may very well see that mech play I was talking about. It's really popular on this map. Um, another little bit piece of information about this map is that Scantipedes on this map prefer the right side of the map to the left side. They don't like the grassy side as much. They prefer the side that has uh, heat coming out of the, the ground, those little vents in the ground, so they, they can... Uh, it just They like the warmer climate, basically, to, to put it bluntly. Although... Some scantipedes have been known to live on the winter side of Belshire Beach. They do? Yeah. Some scantipedes do live there despite the fact that scantipedes prefer the warmer climate. Just, Interesting. Just some info for you guys out there don't know that much about scantipedes. Maybe now, virus on holidays? Going in. Yeah, skiing, perhaps so. Yeah, that may, that may be the case. That's so, a good point. Do you think that scantipedes actually like skiing more or snowboarding? Ah, I'm more, more the snowboarding type. I, I think it's they would probably have to snowboard because if they use skis, they have so many legs. How many skis yeah. would they really be able to wear? It would be really expensive. Yeah, that's so expensive, so difficult. They'd have to really think about what they're doing to keep their balance. And also thinking about what he's doing as Virus, who's going for the uh, mech play apparently. Yeah, going for Blue Flame. Well, actually not necessarily for the mech play, but he's going for the Blue Flame upgrade right now. So we will definitely see him uh, start to use his Starport for a Viking, and uh, sorry, for a Medivac, and then he will start to use some drop play, which is really interesting. This is not the strategy that we usually see by Terran players on this map, but as you said, due to the circumstances, some Terran players prefer to go for mech, which... Oh, I think that a stand-up play is a little... Wow, that was close. That was really close. I think it was almost... 
I don't know, I don't think it was intentional. I was like, maybe try to bait him out there, but by the time that happened, they were already dead, so... <laughs> Not intentional. And Lucky is doing, by the way, kind of what I expected him to do. He's playing really passive, especially after he realized that his opponent already has a fair amount of aliens on the map. Because the problem that you're... Nice, beautiful scout in the, the, to the top right with an overlord for Lucky. He scouts everything. Yeah, but, including the starport. But what, what I was about to say, on this map it's really difficult to defend your natural because there's a huge area where you have to defend and this can get really, really stressful. So getting a lot of spine crawlers into a play is something that allows Lucky to play really dis offensive and defend against this. Uh, look at just I at really the amount of Hellions already. Yeah, we have 13. 13 and I don't Blue like Flame hit. I don't like what Lucky... He's like pulled all his queens away. He's missing injects right now because he... As soon as he saw a star party, he like pulled all of his queens and his Zerglings in me. He's like, ha, ah, you, you won't drop me, but... Now he's missing injects, and he's starting oh. to spread creep in that direction at beautiful. least. Beautiful, bud. That is just a beautiful decision. I love it. Spreading the creep will help him so much. He has overlords in position everywhere. He knows about his opponent's engagement path, and he also knows about the dropship, but he does not react in time. The Queens, I'm not quite sure. Is he able to get it? Nice. Already in position, but the Hellions try to get into position at the third, but look Whoa. at these spine cards. Beautiful. This is beautiful. I love it. He cannot Lucky. be shut down. Lucky read everything so well and is now in a position where he can defend against this. The Hellions, yeah, the Hellions will not kill any drones. No matter what. Well, he is gonna... Ah, so much hesitation here. What? Oh, I guess he's gonna go for it. He doesn't even target drones, though. He shoots at some spine crawlers. For Virus, this is horrible because everything yeah. that he tried is just completely shut down. He was kind of relying on this Blue Flame Hellion upgrade on the on all these Hellions as well, and they don't do any damage. They don't do any damage at all, and Lucky's already going for the Spy Attack. Four drones have been killed, but he lost so many of his Hellions already, trying to drop in the back of the natural, but Lucky is already there to defend. Wow. Well, nice pickup, though. Oh, my yeah. God. He's not done yet. Wow, this is actually really nice micro. Now he's starting to do some damage. Only now five talking. more workers killed, but a lot of Zerglings lost. In total, resources lost. 1,500 lost for Lucky, just 500 lost for Virus. So that was actually a nice little second drop there. Something that caused the opponent off guard quite heavily. Yeah, Lucky had a problem when he was engaging with the Zerglings. They lined up in the blue flame Hellions took advantage of it. They just completely tipped them down in a, a matter of like 0.5 seconds was really well done by Virus here and finally getting something out of this new composition that he used early on. The thing is that the Spire is now uh, already, well, about to be completed. We have 700 gas. He does not really have the minerals in order to build all these lists, but still, the first Thors are now in production. So it's going to be interesting to see. Lucky already faced, just a reminder, Lucky faced this new composition. Yeah, against 4GG. 4GG play kind of the same, a lot uh, revolving around Hellions and Thors, then adding the um, the tanks into the mix, but Lucky dealt with it quite well, so we'll see if he is able to pull it off again. Scan's going off here to take out some tumors. And indeed, he will take out a decent amount of the ones on the top of his base. Trying to decide what he wants to do here. He wants to fight one more, get away from Mew's sides to get away. And guys, while well, we have a little bit of room to breathe, uh, I have the perfect picture right now on uh, Linok. Linok is sitting here, there's... Oh, nice! Drop shot on! Very well done! Linok is just sitting there, waving. He is sucking at a lollipop, and at the same time, he's sitting in a huge amount of chairs <laughs> that are stacked up at the side. He's got his own personal throne, man. Yeah, it looks so awesome. I would, it's just too dark. I would love to take a picture right now and uh, send you guys later on Twitter, but uh, this is brilliant. Plus one carapace is on the way now for Lucky. His Roach Horn is on the way. He knows he's going to need that, just like last game. Now I'm really curious to see how this is going to play out because against 4GG it worked really well when he made the extra corruptors and just slowly but surely pushed patiently against the doors and uh, the planetary. And in this case we have an orbital up for the third base. Really nice control so far here by both players uh, and Virus has actually been impressing me this game. I didn't think he would do so well against Lucky. He's not out of this game yet. He's not even that ahead. But I just like his position he's in now. Where he's got the third base up. He's got five factories to work from. And things are looking good for him. He's up 10 supply. Tries to get some drones here, but will not. And in fact, will lose the majority of these Hellions. But taking out some Zerglings with it. 
We have a lot of upgrades now starting. Lucky is now trying to uh, go not only for the speed for his roads, but at the same time we have this very important upgrade that he missed the last time against 4GG a little bit. He missed the uh, speed upgrade for this for his Bane Links. This time he does not miss a beat. And which is really important is also the upgrade for the Mutalist. So they really like his upgrade pattern here that he goes for the armor instead of the tech. Especially against those. Going for the Hive tech right now. You know, I actually... I wish that some more players who went for this mech play would get the armor upgrade for the Thors as well. That's so useful, especially, I mean, against the composition he's facing. It's not as useful against Roaches, for example, but against Mutas and against Zerglings it's useful. And the art, the attack is definitely better, but if you could get both, it would make his units so strong and difficult to deal with. Hellions are going to actually deny some more creep over here on the left side. I really like that Virus is just going in uh, with his Hellions over and over again, but he might just be completely trapped by the Mutalist now. I don't think he can uh, he can dodge them. No, I don't think so. He's actually going to be totally caught. He loses all of his Hellions now, and in the meantime, Virus is actually looking like he wants to push before Max here. Considering it right now, he wants to take control of the drones watch being built now. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Lucky with the third base is now just going crazy on the drones, taking a fourth at the bottom right. And, uh, well, the fourth just completed. So we have the plus two attack upgrade for Lucky started. He's really focusing a lot on his uh, ground units now. We have seven Thors and seven tanks and 18 blue flame Hellions. Lucky needs to be very, very careful. Uh, his opponent is nearly maxed out on 170 on 180 supply. And Lucky needs a good engagement if he wants to win this. He needs to take down his opponent's army. Then he would be in a beautiful position. But it's kind of questionable at this point if he's able to pull it off. He did a very huge wow. counterattack nice. here, and this is not a planetary. No, it is not. And he is taking down the SCVs of his opponent with all the bailings. But beautiful meanwhile, job. this push is pretty hard to stop. He's got his tanks in tank mode here. The Thor's not all able to fire, though. Yeah, this is not going to be easy. Not at oh, all. There's a lot of siege tanks to defend here, and the Muta's going down to turrets. He's going to need those Mutas. Uh, oh, man, this is not looking good for, for uh, Lucky. He's no. losing a lot here. Look at the supply, 169 to 114. This push so scary right now. He's tearing through the spine crawlers. Yeah, the problem that I see right now is that he just can't engage into the expand into the main of his opponent. And while by the Virus way, is just taking down everything. And if, as soon as he gets access to the main base, there won't be a tech anymore. There, he's he's actually going to win this game. He's cleaned up the majority of the uh, scary part of that army of Lucky. He killed every drone at the bottom right base and killed the uh, bottom center base for Lucky. He's now killed the natural, and he has a concave at the bottom of the ramp of Lucky's only real production area. There are six Broodlords on the way, but I think they're a little bit too late. He kills the Evolution Caper before it researches any upgrades, so now the Roaches are at 0-0. Zero, zero. Not looking good at all for Lucky here. The only thing he has is the Broodlords. He does clean up the Hellions they at the bottom right, late. but he's, he's just lost too much. It's way too late. 33 SCVs to 39 drones, but the base has been retaken for Virus at the top. And he can now just defend it. He actually is going to keep defending these units in the middle. I don't like this because the blue lords are here. He needs to start pulling out of there if he wants to save this army. 160 against 142 supply. Three he's, bases for Virus. He's only. just going to fight these broods. And he may have enough doors. They may actually just pull it up. I, I missed the queens. He still has queens. He couldn't try to transfuse. Yeah, he's not doing it though. He has enough energy for transfuse. But he only has two queens left. And he does buy some time, I suppose you could say, with this mech army and killed a few broods. The supply, very close right now, but Hellions have killed the drones to the bottom right. Again, they're even going to work on the hatchery now. And in fact, he's going to target the hatchery now with the siege tanks now. All of his mech units at plus two, this hatchery will fall. Oh, the Thor going to do some serious damage to those mutas! Oh, barely not killing them. <laughs> Three of those mutas in the red. Wow. This is just... Virus is dropping supply down to 113. He still has the mining going, but at the same time... It's, nah. But he can't get back into this, can he? I don't think so. Right now, let me give you guys some more numbers. 34 SVs and 37 drones. 5 Broodlords out on the map. 5 Thors. 9 Siege Tanks. There are already 4 Vikings out. There are 2 Corruptors to kind of support those and 5 Mutas. But 2 Vikings at a time being made. And the mining right now is 1500, 1600 per minute for Virus versus 400 for Lucky. So that's 4 times better. And he just does not have the economy. And a few 
minutes here, Buyers will have three max, and Lucky will probably be approaching 140 to 150 supply. He just does not have any economy right now. Three mining bases, two mining. Nice, there's some patches left in the main base, so Virus with everything that he needs, and while well, those Brute Lords are just very, very slow creeping across the map, and this gives Virus additional time to get the Viking count up. Yep, two more about the pop, which will put him at eight. Here we go, the Corruptors flying in here as well, but they're going down so fast. And there are the tanks are not steeped up, so the Thors are actually having to take extra shots. But look at this, he's just dying too quickly. GG. And Virus takes this game. And therefore he has the same score as Lucky. Lucky and Virus are on 1-2 as is Brown. Very interesting situation in the group that we are approaching. Yeah. We have so many games left. I think, is our next game Huck against uh, for Gigi? I believe that is the case. Because the thing is, if Huck is taking the next game as well, then suddenly we will have every other player on uh, one... Well, we will have four players on one, two. Yeah. And it is Huck against for Gigi for the next game. The map will be Metropolis. So, look forward to that. Yeah. Pretty interesting situation that could possibly be uh, happening after this next game. Metropolis, as you just mentioned, this is the map. And yeah, just talking a little bit about in the lobby, they uh, tell the players which color to take. But this could be a very, very interesting group. We mentioned from the start that this is a very, very tight group with a lot of players that could t potentially take the Kodas spot, one of the two. But yeah. If Hawk wins this game, he'll be at 3-0. And that is something that I think nobody really expected from Hawk in this group. Some people thought he'll do a good showing, but he won't get out. But if he wins this game, it, it's so close. It's so almost certain that he'll get out. I mean, we saw yesterday at least go 3-0 and then not manage to uh, win any more games and then eventually fall out. But Huck, man, he is looking on fire today. He looked so confident back uh, backstage after after the game. I talked to him just briefly about his hole, and he was like, yeah, I'm feeling, he's feeling pretty good. So we'll see exactly how he does in this next game. If he wins this game, not only will his you know mindset be basically set, he won't have any more fear. He'll be actually just focused. And uh, to beat 4GG, though, is not going to be easy. No, it definitely won't be easy, especially when 4GG showed a very nice performance against the first Boros player that he faced today when he was able to beat Killer on Metropolis, the very same map that we are going to approach now once again. And here they are, our two players. Yep, there they are indeed. Let's see what Huck is going to show us on this map. You can see a little bit of fatigue uh, in his face right now. Again, like his, his brow is furrowed, but he has gotten two wins already. We'll see if he can get a third one here against Finn, who has not shown us the best game so far today, but is doing decently. In just a moment here, we will be in our next game. So don't go anywhere. This is GSL up and downs with Wolf and Kaldor. This is Group D.